I'll be showing you information on how to design your own guitar style and build that if you do so choose. Now just a li little couple things about the design here. This is what I call my Marlin shape. It is 14 inches across and 18 inches long and that seems to work for me. It's a little large, especially uh, across compared to most production guitars, but I like a bigger guitar. Um, but the general consensus seems to be somewhere around uh, 12 and 3 quarters, 13 inches if you're looking at production uh, guitars that are currently on the market for electrics. Now one important thing to notice when you're doing this is I've marked off where the bridge is going to be on my guitar just to make sure that I like where that sits and I simply did that by finding out this is where my 14th, sorry, 15th fret connects and I measured the distance from the 15th fret here and just place my bridge to make sure it looks good. Now when drawing out your guitar there's a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, you want these curves to be as smooth as possible so that they are visually appealing. Um, some people have an eye for it and you can simply freehand them and then uh, perfect them by just erasing and redrawing them until you get them perfect. Another way to do it is with a tool called a French curve. I don't actually have one. But a lot of people find them handy. It's just a, uh, you'll see a French curve scraper later in the video. But there's also a French curve designing tool, which is essentially just a, uh, a designing aid that has curves on it that get gradually tighter. But they are all visually appealing curves, so you can use them. And um, such as to make these curves look visually appealing with uh, ease. Another thing to keep in mind is if you want your shape to be symmetrical about um, the center of the guitar, then I'd suggest drawing one half and then flipping that over and tracing it onto the other half. As you can see, mine is symmetrical until you get to about the waist, and then obviously the upper bout and the lower, lower bout are quite different. But what I did is I drew the upper belt first till about here, cut out that piece, flipped it over and just traced it on both sides here. One last thing about designing, you may want to mark out roughly where your neck is going to be just to see if you like the access that your cutaway gives and that the neck covers any areas like uh, this horn I want to be under my neck area because I'm going to carve that out. Um, also, now's a good time if you're going to do an extra large belly cut or like I'm doing here, um, cut away to gain upper fret access. Uh, now would be a good time to mark out any chambering that you plan on doing on the guitar. Um, I'm not planning any on this one, but uh, if I were to, I would watch out for areas such as where the bridge goes, perhaps my pickups, obviously where the neck is, and any carve I don't want to carve into my uh, hollowing cavities. And also, just generally, try and keep about, if you have large cavities, keep about a half inch distance. Um, so if your cavity is like that, you want to keep a, about a half inch, especially on places where there's lots of end grain. To make your template, we're going to go to the copy store and make a copy of your design blueprint so we can cut out um, the shape of the guitar on the copy and trace it onto 8th inch hardboard. Now there's a couple reasons why I use 8th inch hardboard for my master templates. Uh, the f We're going to be making half to 3 quarter inch thick MDF templates to use in the actual routing process but I make all my uh, master templates out of 8th inch hardboard for two reasons. One since it's not as thick as the MDF material, you can make a more accurate template with uh, perfectly perpendicular sides, etc., etc., with a lot less effort than if you were to do it with thicker MDF material. It's a lot easier this way. And secondly, when we use this master template to make a MDF, a thicker MDF copy, we will always have this master template because uh, MDF, well, and hardboard, but they both deteriorate over time with use of bearings, etc, etc. And so the fewer copies you have to make off your master, the better. 
So I keep a eighth inch hardboard master of all my templates and then when the MDFs start to get a little questionable I then make a copy so that the master isn't what I'm using every single time and I've always got it safe. Next we're going to take this outline onto your uh, saw and cut it out pretty close to the line. As you can see I've left a little room outside my template line to work with and this will help uh, when we are shaping it to perfection on the oscillating spindle sander and the disc sander. I want some room to work with. We're going to start by doing all the concave surface, sorry, convex surfaces on our disc sander just by going up to our line, keeping everything perfect. One good way to see if you're um, got any lumps or irregularities is to use what I call silhouette light. Just um, hold the template up to a light source and you'll be able to better see any irregularities along your edge. Um, and then after we do that we'll go in and get our concave surfaces on the spindle sander. And yeah, just go ahead and bring it up to the line. Now we're going to go ahead and do the concave areas with this spindle sander. One little trick is use the largest diameter spindle that you can for the uh, curves that you're doing. It'll leave a smoother transition and you'll have to do less work. Another trick is hit all your visible high points and then do sweeping passes and those will take off evenly. If you don't hit your high points off first then it'll just continue putting those bumps into it. Um, another little trick is I keep a small piece of sandpaper around because when you're sanding it flips up little edges it makes it hard to see your profile. So I just knock off those edges before I uh, hold it up to the light to see. And here's what your template should look like when it's finished. Graceful, sweeping, elegantly transitioned curves. Next we're going to be making a neck template that will uh, make the taper of our fingerboard and neck. And as you can see here, I've done a full scale drawing of what the neck will be like. What I've done is I've put a center line and marked where my nut will be and written that it is a 25.4 inch scale uh, fretboard uh, like on Martin guitars that is where the nut is and then go down all the way here I've measured where 25.4 is and that would be the bridge so then um, I'm using a bridge that has a spacing of 2 and 3 30 seconds of an inch uh, string spacing so I've made this line 2 and 3 30 seconds of an inch and I've come down here and I want a 3 uh, sorry a 1 and 3 quarter inch nut however that's the actual nut not the string spacing down at the bridge we have a mark for the string spacing up at the nut we have a mark for how wide I want the nut so what I've done is I've brought each side in an eighth of an inch so the two E strings are going to be an eighth of an inch inside of that one and three quarter inch uh, nut width and I've connected those points to the string spacing on the bridge then what I've done is connected the uh, end points of the nut width down here I've added an eighth of an inch on either side and that makes it so that we have the inner the inner lines are our strings path and the outer lines are now what our fretboard will be We'll transfer these lines onto some MDF and we'll go ahead and cut out the template. To make the template, what I've done is I have made a sh kind of shooting board for my table saw. These keep the piece flat and it simply rides along and I made the board and then sent it through the saw to ensure that this edge was perfectly aligned with this blade. So then what I can do is I can follow my lines on my template, line those up with the edge of this board, clamp everything down, and then just send it on through. <laughs> 